So graphing quadrilateral ABCD on question one. Go right ahead. Uh, yeah, I, we probably should have warned each other, huh? I see a lot of uh, racing because you're figuring out that uh, you got a graph 13 on the x-axis, so watch out for that. All right, there's no negative coordinates here either, so there's no need for a left side of the y-axis. Everyone's got this done before we get going. This asks us to prove it's a trapezoid, just a plain trapezoid. There was one and only one property yesterday of a trapezoid, so that's what I'm going to ask somebody here first today is. Uh, what do I need to show to make this a trapezoid? All right, so go back yesterday where there was only one, not isosceles, I'm not talking isosceles. It just says prove this is a trapezoid. What do I need to show about it? Uh, let's start with 15. What do I need to show? What, trapezoid only. One pair, opposite sides are parallel, right? And probably in my diagram, just by looks, it's probably gonna be A, B, and D, C. We've been talking all unit. All right, you want me to prove lines parallel? What formula am I going to need here now? Four, what formula am I going to need? If I wanted to show two lines parallel, they have to have the same, and this is the formula I'm going to need. Slope formula. All right, you and your group right now. Go ahead, determine what the slope of AB is for me, and determine what the slope of BC is, and don't go any further. Go ahead in your group. You can use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 or use rise over run. Your call. But I got to have you guys doing this on your own. All right. Find it in your group. Make sure everyone's got the same slopes. And I'll ask somebody what you ended up with. Yeah. Ask yourself, should it be positive or negative as well? Remember that. All right, let's talk slope of AB and BC. Let's talk 10, slope of AB. Yep, three over six, if anybody wants to reduce that to one half. And Josh, what'd you get for BC? Yep, five over 10, which also reduces down to one half. Perfect, that's what we wanted. Because I know if the slopes are the same, they're parallel. Hold the brakes though. This isn't gonna be it though. If you just have one pair of sides that are parallel, couldn't this still be a parallelogram, right? This could still be a parallelogram, not necessarily a trapezoid. So how do we eliminate the possibility that it could be a parallelogram is my question. Because we right now, you can't just say it's a trapezoid because I'm gonna write could be a parallelogram too. So how do I eliminate the possibility that this is a parallelogram? Got a thought, Lisa? Correct, and that is how you do a trapezoid. Yes, show one pair parallel, but also show one pair that is not parallel. And how, what formula am I gonna need for that? Still slopes. So go back to work with your group right now. Find the slope of AD for me. It's find the slope of, of I wrote BC, I meant DC. Slope of BC.
All right, talk to me here. Uh, when you're ready, 15, slope of AD. Negative 5 over 2. Good. And how about uh, BC? Okay, go ahead. Count them up for me and let me know. Yep, which is negative 1 half. Anybody concerned that it became negative 1 half? As long as it doesn't become positive 1 half, right? We don't care. Perfect. Found all the slopes. Now, remember, anytime you show me a formula... Next step right after is what did we just learn? All right, so what do we know now by finding all four slopes? One fact that you know is true now. Uh, let's hear four via one fact you know is true. Okay, let's stop there. AB parallel to DC because slopes are equal. Done. And then VIA also mentioned, hey, AD, and then you can just do the parallel sign with the slash. That's fine. AD not parallel to BC because slopes are not equal. Done. So I found all four slopes. One pair is parallel, the other is not. Perfect. That definitely means there's only one figure it could be. And that's what we're going to say in step three. A, B, C, D is a trapezoid. And I'm going to turn it back to you guys and tell me a nice reason why it's a trapezoid. Oh, oh. let's let your classmates think about it. Because one, parallel, one pair of sides parallel isn't going to cut it. It could still be a parallelogram. In your, in your reason, you have to tell me why it's a trapezoid only. All right, your, your reason shouldn't also have to be a, could be a parallelogram. All right, what's a decent reason here? Talk to me. I got, I'll hear anything and write down anything. 20? Uh, one pair of both sides is parallel and one pair is not parallel. Fine. One pair of opposite sides parallel and the other is not. I've heard also only one pair of opposite sides are parallel. That's fine too. So it's a trapezoid because one pair of opposite sides parallel and the other is not. Fine. Questions? Proving a trapezoid now on the graph. All right, so we're all comfortable there? All right, because now we're going to say, all right, how do I do an isosceles trapezoid? And all, hey, all it's going to be, same proof, a couple extra steps after I say it's a trapezoid to make it isosceles. All right, so I'll let you guys get moving here. Go ahead and graph triangle, uh, triangle, uh, quadrilateral Nora. Oh, I didn't even notice that spells Nora. I have a friend, Nora. Nobody cares. All right, well, we're still going to have to, even though I'm looking for an isosceles trapezoid, you still got to prove it a trapezoid first. All right, it won't be isosceles unless it's a trapezoid first. So that's why I'm going to give you and your group a couple minutes right now. And go ahead, 
prove to me, just like we did in the previous example, prove to me that it's just a trapezoid. And then we'll move on together to say how it's isosceles. So go right ahead. If anybody, a uh, quick reminder, a horizontal line like AR and NO, anybody remember the slopes, groups? Zero. zero, yep, slope is zero. So go ahead, prove to me, write out your proof that it's at least nor is a trapezoid, and then we'll talk why it's isosceles. Go ahead, work with your groups. All right, so making this into an isosceles trapezoid. It's already a trapezoid. Now, how do I make it isosceles? Really, you're probably not going to prove base angles congruent. Not on a graph, anyway. So you have two options. What was one, another property of uh, an isosceles trapezoid yesterday? Maybe I can show here. Four, via. What's so good about isosceles? I know base angles are equal, but it's probably not happening on a graph. So what else could I show? What other property of an isosceles trapezoid? The legs are congruent. I could show AN and RO are congruent, or I think you're about to say as well, I could also show the diagonals are congruent. Either way, I'm going to need what formula here? Distance formula. All right, distance. So go. let's do legs congruent here. So let's go back to your groups right now. Find the distance or length of leg AN and find the distance or length of RO for me. Okay, use your distance formula. We've gone over this. Look back if you need it. We've gone over these formulas before. Make sure everyone comes up with the same distances of AN and RO. Big square root, that's something underneath it, right? Distances, 19, your distances? Five and five, yep, should have got the square root of, and I'm just, you know, going ahead here, but square root of 25, five, yep. All right, so number five, again, always keep this in mind. You use a formula, slope, distance, midpoint, what did you just learn? Now, following step, automatically, what did we just learn? Not that it's an isosceles trapezoid. That AN and RO are what? What's going in the middle there? What did you just learn if they both came out to five? Both of them will be uh, two, one, George, what are they? Both of them are congruent because slopes are equal. All right, so it's a trapezoid. I got the legs congruent. Now it's a, Nora is a isosceles trapezoid. And I'm gonna turn it over to you, one of you guys. What's a good or a reason? Not because it has congruent legs. I could show you a parallelogram that's got a pair of sides congruent, right? I could show you a rhombus, a rectangle. Why is this an isosceles trapezoid in particular? Not because it has congruent legs. 17, what did we already prove it? Uh, what did you say? Okay, so because it's a trapezoid with Well, parallel sides doesn't make it isosceles. What makes the what made the trapezoid isosceles? What work oh, did we do? With congruent legs. Okay, if you say congruent sides, it still could be the parallel sides, which I don't need. It's a trapezoid with congruent legs. Questions there? All right, so there you go with your coordinate proof with trapezoids. How to prove a trapezoid, how to prove an isosceles trapezoid. Next up, still stick with the trapezoid. I want to show you guys a special segment in the trapezoid now. All right, a special segment only contained in a trapezoid or isosceles trapezoid. Uh, and first, I apologize here. We forgot to change the letters. We changed the name of the quadrilateral, but we never changed the letters in the problem. So for part B, uh, find the midpoints of the non-parallel sides, label the midpoint of AN as E and the midpoint of RO as F. Okay. 
So we're going to find the midpoints of the non-parallel sides. You and your group right now are reflecting and uh, trying to remember what the midpoint formula was. So go right ahead and find the midpoint of both those non-parallel sides for me, a.k.a. the legs. Okay, find the midpoint of each right now. Midpoint of AN, midpoint of RO. And that's correct. I'm not giving you the formula. Go back, look it up, talk to each other in your group. Midpoint of AN, midpoint of RO, make sure it's on the line. Okay, midpoint. Nine, one midpoint that we have. Let's take midpoint of AN. What do we have? Midpoint of AN? Negative two, comma, 4.5, everyone. Negative two, comma, 4.5. Add your X's, divide by two. Add your Y's, divide by two. Please graph that as well. Negative two, 4.5. Wait, negative two? What? Look, positive 2, 4.5 is right here. I don't know how that could be the midpoint. Okay, already? Let's add our X's up again here. So A N, if you add your X's of A and N, 1 plus negative 3 gives me what? Negative 2 divided by 2 gives me negative 1. So it should be negative 1, 4.5. Yes, no, we got the midpoint formula down. Maybe I should have gave it to you. We all good? Okay, come on, let's go. Negative one, 4.5 right here. There's point E. And how about point F on the other side? Point F, 22, point F. Five, 4.5. We know how we got that, Aiden, other than just looking at your group's paper. All right, I hope so. Call that point F. Connect those two, please. Connect the midpoints of the non-parallel sides. Or we'll have a name for that segment in a second. Okay, that's when you connect the midpoints of the non-parallel sides, it's got a special name and a trapezoid. Before we find that name, it's already at the bottom of your paper anyway, if you want to look. Uh, find the, you and your group. Find the slope. Ready? Find the slope of EF. 30 seconds. Slope of EF. Should no, be no need for rise over run, change in Y over change in X. Slope of EF, what do we have? 14? Got it. 15. Zero, good, because it's a horizontal line. And now go ahead with your group. Find the length of AB. That's sorry, I got to change those. Those are not correct because we got new... Uh, New letters for the trapezoid. So find the length of AR, AR, EF, and NO. 
Should be no need for distance formula here within your group. No need for distance formula. Find the distance of AR, the distance of NO, and then EF. No need for distance formula, though. Sure. All right, count them. What do you have when you count them? 24, what do we got for AR? Yep, length of two. How about the length of EF? 10, six. And how about the length of NO? One, 10. All right, so let's talk. This segment you guys created where you connect the midpoints of a trapezoid. It's called the mid-segment. Mid-segment, it's at the bottom of your page. Mid-segment, kind of sounds like midpoint. Probably because you join the midpoints, right? Mid-segment, when I join the midpoints of the legs of a trapezoid. All right, there's two properties you need to know about it. You've already found them. Go ahead, flip your paper over. You'll see where to write your properties in. The slope of that mid-segment was what? Zero. Wasn't something to other side zero as well? Yeah, AR and NO. So what can I say about the three if all of them came out to be the same slope? They're all parallel. So there is uh, the first property. Mid-segment, parallel to the bases. All right, a mid-segment parallel to the bases because they all have the same slope. All right, here's where you're gonna to have to work pretty darn hard right now in your group. Length is blank. I'm just gonna let you and your group talk about how could I find the length of the mid-segment and look back how it compared to the length of the bases. So I'm gonna let you and your group decide, hey, if you wanna find the length of a mid-segment, this is what you do with the bases. Go ahead, talk it over a little bit. Segment. Uh, let's go seven. All right, yep, yeah, that's fine. I'll put it in a little bit different terms, but the length is half the sum of the bases. So yes, add your bases and take take it, cut it in half. So length is half the sum of the bases. Right. So the, the mid-segment's always parallel, and it's half the length of the basis. All right, I'm going to let leave you with two minutes here. Trapezoid is isosceles, and the mid-segment's already drawn in for you, 2x minus 5. You and your group discuss, find x and y. Give you as much time as you need here. Find x and y for me. And it's okay if it comes out to be some decimals. Finding X. What did you and your group decide to set up to find uh, X here? 18. What did you and your group decide to find X? Uh, I added 32 and 13 and then divided it by 2. And then you said 2X minus 5 is equal to 32 plus 5. Yep. So 2X minus 5 is equal to half of 32 plus 13. And what did you end up, Adrian, with X? 13.75. Got it. All good there. Mid segment, 2x minus 5 is equal to half the bases added up. Done. And now, how did we find y now? Now we had to go to the fact that it was an isosceles trapezoid. No more mid segment. It was isosceles, so I could use a couple properties there. Uh, George, talk to me. How'd you find y? Uh, we get 5y minus 2. Plus 72 equals 180. Okay. Now let's talk about how they got to the 180 business here, right? Well, since it is isosceles, the base angles are equal. So if that's 5y minus 2, you could say that's 5y minus 2. These sides are parallel. So these angles right here are same side interior. That's how they got the 180. 
And what'd you guys get for why? 22. There you go, get everybody. 22. All good? Questions, comments? All set? Romeo. You can leave only for as any trapezoid. As long as it connects the midpoint of the non-parallel sides. Works for, it can be in a trapezoid or an isosceles trapezoid. Good, you're welcome. All right, flip it over. Go ahead with your group. Start your homework. Only got three questions for you tonight. Last question to review question. And just say, be careful, on number one, does it say it's isosceles? No, so base angles are not congruent. Be careful there. All right, be careful. Base angles are not congruent. Only in an isosceles trapezoid.